Hey everybody, welcome back to the first chapter with Miss Han. So I'm gonna be reading Turtle in Paradise. Turtle is the main character. Um, Turtle is a little girl who currently at the beginning of the story lives with her mother. Um, her mother is a housekeeper. The mother is informed by her employers that they don't like children. So she was a housekeeper that her daughter lived with her and she stayed um, at the actual home she was a housekeeper for. So she had to make a choice. She had to, to keep her job, which would, this was during the Great Depression time period. So she decided to keep her job or send her daughter away. She chose to keep her job and she sent her daughter, Turtle, to live in a totally different state, um, actually moved, sent them to key, her to Key West, Florida, to live with family. And these are relatives she's never, ever met. Imagine how scary it would be as a child. Now, Turtle is a very strong personality, and Turtle feels that you can always tell how a person is by the color of their eyes and she like her mother's eyes are very soft blue and she feels her mother only sees kittens and and roses and sees all the good things in life and her eyes are gray and she says that she sees things for the darkness and sees things for the bad things um so she's built up this shell to protect her so nobody can bother her so she's a really tough girl she didn't even cry when she had to say goodbye to her mother and her mother was sending her away to people she had never met so turtle's pretty tough but she is on her journey and one of the things you'll find out in the very first chapter she is coming being sent to live with her relatives her mother didn't come with her her mother um got a salesman to bring her so imagine how scary that is with someone tra traveling um, for hours and hours with a person you you kind of know she knew this gentleman a little bit but not very much it was a friend of her mother's so very kind of scary now Jennifer L. Holmes is the author of the story and she really does a great job of pulling in historical um, events that were going on during this time period and she really based her story of turtle around her great grandmother who was an immigrant who came to live in Key West, Florida. And these are family lores that um, and tales that she has grown up hearing and stories. Um, so it's a great way to kind of understand the history and the, what was going on during this time period and also to see the point of view of the children that were growing up in Key West. Um, I always think, oh, Key West, I want to go. It's tropical. It's warm. But when you read it, you realize, wow, it was, there's a lot of cool things and there's a lot of, there's a lot of rough history in Key West. So the first chapter is called The Rotten Kids, and that's the chapter we're going to read. Now, throughout the reading, you're going to hear um, terminology that you may not be familiar with because they in Key West have their own kind of language, their slang, um, and they call each other different names. Um, everybody who lives in Key West goes by a nickname. You really don't go by your nickname, by your true birth name. You go by a nickname. Um, also, if you live in Key West, you're called a conch, and a conch is a shell, a spiral shell that has um, an animal that lives inside, but in this term, that the way it's used, um, it is actually means you live in Key West. So, we're going to start in June 1935. Everyone thinks kids are sweet as Nanko wafers, but I live long enough to know the truth. Kids are rotten. The only difference between grown-ups and kids is that grown-ups go to jail for murder and kids get away with it. I stared out the window as Mr. Egret's Ford Model A rumbled along the road, kicking up clouds of dust. It was so hot. The backs of my legs feel like melting gum, only stickier. We've been driving for days now, and it feels like an eternity. In front of us is a rusty pickup truck with a gang of dirty-looking kids in the back, sandwiched between furniture, an iron bed, a rocking chair, battered pots, all tied up with little bits of frayed rope like a spider web. 
a girl my age is holding a baby that's got a pair of baby ladies bloomers tied to its head just to keep the sun out. The boy sitting next to her has a gap in front of in between his two front teeth. Now that didn't stop him from blowing spitballs at us through a straw. We'd been stuck behind this truck for the last few miles with our windshield was covered with wads of bits of wet newspaper. Imagine how gross that would be. The spitball smacked the window as Mr. Egret hammered the horn with the palm of his hand. No good boy, just laughing and sticking out his tongue. There ought to be a law. No wonder this country's going to the dogs, Mr. Egret grumbled. Mr. Egret, you can call me Lyle, has a lot of opinions. Some folks say in the dust, he, he says folks in the dust bowl wouldn't be having so much trouble if they just moved near some water. He says he doesn't think President Roosevelt will get us out of this depression, and if you give someone money for work, not working, why would they ever bother finding a job? But mostly Mr. Egypt talks about his new hair serum he's selling and that is going to make him rich. It is called Hair Today, and he is a believer, and he's been using this product himself. Can you see that new hair turtle? He asked, pointing at his shiny bald head. I don't see anything. I, m you must be gra growing invisible hair. Maybe Archie should start selling his hair serum for him. If his pal, Mr. Egret's anything to go by, most men would rather have hair than be smart. Archie is a travel salesman. He sells everything from brushes, brushes to gadgets to Bibles, you name it. Right now, he's peddling encyclopedias. I think he could sell a trap to a mouse. Archie likes to say this, too. It's the truth. Housewives can't resist him, and I know Mama couldn't. It was last May, one day after my 10th birthday, when I opened the door of Mrs. Grant's house and saw Archie standing there. He had dark brown eyes and thick black hair brushed back with lemon promenade. Well, hello there, Archie said to me, tipping his Panama, Panama hat. Is the lady of the house home? Which lady, I asked, the ugly one or the pretty one? He laughed, well, why ain't you a sweet little thing? I am not sweet, I said. I slugged Ronald Carcass when he tried to throw up my throw my cat in the well, and I'll do it again. Archie roared with laughter. I bet you would. What's your name, Princess? Turtle, I said. Turtle, hey? He mused and he stroked his chin. I can see why. You got a little snap to to you, don't you? Who's that? Who are you talking to, Turtle? My mother called coming to the door. Archie smiled at Mama. You must be the pretty lady. Mama put her hand over her heart. Otherwise, it would have leaked right out of her chest. She fell so hard for Archie that she left a dent in the floor. Mama's always fallen in love, and fellas she picks are like dandelions. One day they're there, bright as sunshine, charming Mama, buying me presents the next day they're gone scattered with the wind leaving weeds everywhere and mama crying but mama said archie's different i'm starting to think she might be right he keeps his promises and he hadn't disappeared yet even smoky likes him which is saying something considered she bit the last fella mama dated also he's got big dreams which is more than i can say for most of them mark my word princess archie told me We'll be living on Easy Street one day. Well, that sounded swell to me, but even I know there's going to be a few bumps on the way to Easy Street, and I'm sitting right here next to one of them. You like little orphan Annie and her dog, Mr. Egypt said, eyeing Smokey, who's curled up in my lap. You know, Annie's dog, what's his name? How could someone have opinions on baldness and not know the name of Annie's dog? She's the most famous orphan on the radio and in the funny pages. You know, the dog that's always with her? I looked out the window. The one that's always barking? Sandy, I said. Right, right, Sandy, he said with a pleased look. What does Sandy say again? Arf, I said. That's good, 
Sandy says, Arf, Mr. Ar Egret. Cor no, let me get started. Mr. Egret said, and your cat says, meow. I rolled my eyes. What happened to your cat anyway, he said, with a slide, slide long glance at Smokey. He got the, she got the mange. She got burned, I said, and I soothed my hands over Smokey's ragged patches of fur. That's why you call her Smokey? No, I said. That was her name first. I still don't understand why you couldn't say that with the old dame there, said Mr. Egret. Place was a mansion. I don't understand why you can't stay there. Looks like something Shirley Temple would live in. why they kick you out? Shirley Temple is this kid... This little kid actress, everybody's calling America's little darling. She has dimpled cheeks, ringlet curls, and is always breaking into song and doing da a dance number at the drop of a hat. Everyone thinks she's the cutest thing ever. I can't stand her. Real kids aren't anything like Shirley Temple, I should know, because Mama's the housekeeper. We get free room and board which wouldn't be so bad except the rest of the house usually comes with kids. They're never nice to the housekeeper's daughter. There was a 12-year-old Sylvia Decker who gave me the old do the, her old doll and then told her mother that I stole it from her. We didn't last very long there. And then there was Josephine Stark who told all the kids at school that it was my job to clean the toilets. No one would play with me after that. The worst and the most rough were the curly boys, Melvin and Marvin. They thought it would be funny to light poor Smokey's tail on fire and watch her run around. Mr. Curly didn't believe me when I told him what his boys did, and he fired Mama right on the spot. Like I said, kids are rotten. Mama promised me that someday we're going to live in our own home. We've got it all picked out, too. It's a Sears mail order home from a kit, the Bellwood Model 3304. This was what the brochure said. So, boys and girls, during this time, did you know you could actually order a house, a actual house from Sears? You could order it from the catalog, and they'd send you everything you needed to build it. So, that's why they're called Sears order houses. The Bellwood is another happy combination of a well-laid-out floor plan with modern, ex attractive exterior. The design is adaptive to of a small English cottage. There's a living room, a kitchen, a dining room, two bedrooms, a bath that comes with something called a medicine cabinet. I don't know what it is, but it sure sounds fancy. Still, we're a long way from living in Bellwood. Mama says she's lucky to have a job with Mr. Bunnick, considering how tough times are. I don't know how lucky I am that Mrs. Bunnick shook her head when Mama brought over our things to her house. You didn't say anything about having a child. Children are noisy. I cannot, can't abide noise, Mrs. Bunnick said, tapping her foot. I asked Archie if I could stay with him. Princess, he said, shaking his head. I live in a ro rooming ha house with a bunch of older men. I don't think that's exactly the kind of place a young lady should be, if you get what I mean. So now I'm on my way to Key West to live with my mama's sister, Minerva, who I've never met. Mr. Egret's pal of, is a pal of Archie, and since he was already going to Miami to meet a fellow about hair today, he offered to give me a ride. Also, he owes Archie a bunch of money, and I guess hair today ain't exactly an overnight success. Mama thinks me going to Key West is a swell idea. You'll love it, baby, Mama said. Mama's good at looking at the sunny side of life. Her favorite song is Life is Just a Bowl of Cherries. I blame Hollywood. Mama's watched so many of those pictures that she believes in happy endings. She's been waiting her whole life to find someone who would sweep her off her feet and take care of her. Me, I think life's more like a cartoon by Mr. Disney, The Three Little Pigs. Some big bad wolf always trying to blow down your house. Ahead of us, the pickup truck swerves wildly. The kids in the back are clinging to the side. 
What's that fella doing anyway, Mr. Egret said. I think his tire's gone flat, I said. A moment later, the pickup truck falls off to the side of the road in a cloud of dust. We slow down beside the truck. There's a worn looking lady in the front seat staring straight ahead and a drooling toddler asleep in her lap. The fella behind the wheel is rubbing his eyes. Mr. Egret called out as he rolled down the window. You need help there, buddy? You need help? Do we look like we need help? The boy in the back asked. Mr. Egret shook his head. Bunch of fools this whole country, he says. We started to move again. I leaned out the window, and looking back, the boy blew spitballs, but we were pulling away already. It falls short and lands in the road. And the second chapter is called Paradise Lost. So, boys and girls, I really encourage you to read this book. Um, it's a great story of Turtle, and I couldn't imagine having to be leave my mother um, to go live with people I've never met. I hope you enjoyed the first chapter. Uh, we will continue with our first chapter readings. Have a great day.